Hello world, thank you all for tuning in. Today I wanted to introduce you to my boys, also known as the Littles. This on the left is Chris Jr. and this on the right is Carter, sleeping sound asleep thankfully. Yes, they are twins, no, they aren't identical, yes. I'm sure they aren't identical because I birthed them, conceived the old fashioned way, born via C-section. They don't run in my family, yes. My hands are indeed full. Now that we got all the simpleton questions all out the way, let's get right into it. So I found out I was pregnant at exactly eight weeks. Um, I found out because I had been throwing up for three days straight, couldn't keep anything down, water. Even when I wasn't eating anything, I was puking stomach acid, so it was really bad. Um, I made an appointment, I kind of figured what it was so I had Chris Sr. come with me um I did have a vaginal ultrasound because it was kind of like too early to do regular ultrasound so it was very awkward um <laughs> but nothing was as awkward as when the gynecologist said first things first there's two heartbeats I literally screamed um felt like I hit the lottery like what two kids in my first try, like, I don't have to double back. Are you serious? Twins, perfect. Uh, dad looked like he wanted to pass out. He was, took him a little minute to comprehend. Oh. Just wanted to get his two cents in. Yeah, uh, so we figured out why I was vomiting so much. It's this thing called um, HG, and it's just basically morning sickness the whole pregnancy, and it's super intense. So um, just because of like all the different hormones I had going through me and just everything new I was going through, I was going through it. And I was prescribed promethazine. Um, I was given all kinds of different things, and none of it worked. I was throwing up the syrup. I was throwing up all kinds of pills. Nothing worked. I finally um, tried this dissolvable, dissolvable ooh, excuse me, pill called a Dancitron, and it stops the sensation of needing to throw up as long as you take it in time. If you take it when you're already having to puke, you're just gonna puke it up anyway. So, yeah, but it did help me out a lot uh, as long as I remember to take it. So. Um, eight months go by, I'm getting big and loved up on, and my boys came early at 36 weeks. You're doing good job. Love you. Doing good job. Okay. What are we doing? You're doing good job. Yay! Is he okay? Oh, shit. Hmm? Yeah. 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 A pooper. Take that little leg. Good job, Kyrie. They're so beautiful. Oh. Sure. Yeah, go check on them. Oh. Oh. You did good. Um, I gave birth in Portland, Oregon on September 29th, 2020 at OHSU, um, also known as like the Dorm Becker Children's Hospital. They are famous for basically they have this program where that is in partnership with Nike and the terminal kids uh, have a chance to design a shoe and Nike releases it. So it's a really cool program. Um, this hospital was the third hospital that I scheduled having birth at uh, simply because the other two wasn't given what was supposed to be given to a pregnant 
women with twins, like the first hospital was saying, I think they only had like a level two NICU, which was nothing. The second hospital had like a level three NICU, but I had to give birth by myself, which obviously was not an option. Like I'm having twins. I needed, absolutely needed dad and my mom there. Um, it's just like two people I couldn't have done it without. So it's just not gonna work for me. Old age at the SU let me have both of them there. Um, and it was just like a lot of different things they let me go around in order to have birth there. So it was kind of a no brainer at that point. Um, because the boys were born a low birth weight, they did have to go to the NICU, um, which is the National Intensive Care Unit. And it's for small babies with little issues. Um, they did have to wear a CPAP for the first day, which is a continuous, <laughs> continuous positive airway pressure device, I wanna say. Um, yeah, I think that's right. So in that, has to be monitored in the NICU, um, but it was off within the first day and it was just kind of like a breathing tube. So the only thing that they had left was, you know, their feeding tube. And their main goal was staying in the NICU was to make sure that they were feeding and growing properly. As long as they were feeding and growing properly, then we would be able to go home and everything would, you know, be fine. So, you know, it was a blessing and a curse then being in the NICU, like the first week, I got a lot of information, a lot of different tips on ways to care for them. With them being, again, my first children, I got like a lot of information that I, of course, didn't have before. Uh, came on the second week, it got a little too overbearing. Um, so there are like 15 pods or 15 pods. 16, 15 or 16 pods in the NICU there. Each pod has like six to eight babies. Every baby is allowed to visitors. Um, and that's not even including like the volunteers that they have coming come in to cuddles with the babies, you know, for the parents that are like super far away. And, um, you know, just being able to switch out guests and things of that nature. It was just like, way too much access to my kids in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so it just started giving me like really, really, really bad anxiety. Um, and I was just ready to go at that point. Uh, week two rolls around and you know, I'm just, I'm kind of getting frustrated. Like, okay, what's, what's the issue? When I'm here, they're eating fine. When I leave, they're supposedly not eating fine. So why, like what's going on? So um, I did become like a little, Detectives start randomly popping up. I did pop up on this one nurse at like three o'clock in the morning. Um, and she was already tube feeding them and it wasn't time for them to be fed yet. And I'm like, well, why are you tube feeding them instead of trying to regularly feed them? Because they're not supposed to be what's called gravage, also known as tube feeding, until they try to be regularly fed in their gravage only if need be. A lot of you know, she replies like, oh, I, had, I was busy with other kids. So I just went ahead and two fed him. First things first, you only have three, it's three kids per nurse, the sign per nurse, like they don't go over that because every kid needs their a certain amount of attention. You have three kids, two of them are mine. So that didn't really answer my question why you're to feeding him instead of trying to feed him regularly so we can learn how to eat so we can get out of here. So that was just like the last drive for me. I was pissed off, I was over it. So after that, I made sure I was there for every last feeding. Like I was there, I made sure the first shift nurse told the second shift nurse told the third shift nurse, like don't even try to feed them because I want to be there to make sure they eat, make sure they get the attention they need or whatever. So once that started happening, um, I say three, four days went by, you know, we're offered a private room. Like, instead of us being in this pod with all these other children, seems like my complaints have finally been heard because I'm, you know, up here every feeding. So we get our private room, continue their feeding, they're growing, eating fine since I've been feeding them. 
Um, Chris gets discharged two days after we go to the fire room and Carter is discharged two days after that. So yeah, um, once Chris was discharged, they didn't make him leave the hospital so we could leave, you know, all at once as one happy family. So yeah, it was an experience. Um, I de definitely had to be momzilla a lot, but I do it all over again, you know, for the safety of my boys. Thank you all for joining. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe.